attorneys of Vicksburg High School, Gerald T.C., would like to welcome each and every one of you to our Liberty Veteran Days Breakfast. It is our sincere hope you enjoy the speaker, food, and the fellowship. We are grateful for all of your sacrifices. Again, thank you for coming and being here. Now, will everyone please stand for the uh, National Anthem and the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the pale On the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night that still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave on the land of the free and the home of the Attention, salute, pledge. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, uh, you may be seated all except for the cadets. Those who are leaving Cadet Creek, please come forward. Cadets, please remain standing. At this time, we will uh, uh, start with our breakfast. Um, so if you need some assistance, our cadets will be there to assist you. If, if you need some help uh, uh, or any type of uh, getting your food and bringing it back to the table, just let one of the cadets know. Uh, that's how you want to direct this traffic here. Starting with our... Oh, I'm, I apologize, I, I jumped ahead. Uh, we now have the occasion.
Good morning. Good morning. First, I would like to welcome all of the veterans, and I'd like to thank all of you for taking time out of your day to come here. I know, I know the decisions that you have made in your life have had sacrifices, and I'd like to thank you for those sacrifices that you have made throughout your life. I'd like to thank all of you for your service, and I'd like to thank all of you for the uneasy and hard decisions that you have made throughout your life. And I'd like to thank all of you for all the time that you have spent throughout the military. And I'd like to thank all, and I'd like to thank all of you for, the brave, for all the brave people that are sitting here today. Because what you did, you didn't have to do. And yet you've done it for the sake of your country and for the sake of your people. Thank you. On the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, the fighting of World War I ended in 1918. Due to the conclusion of the war to end all wars, November 11th became a, uni a universally recognized day of celebration. That day was originally declared Arm Armistice Day. Eight years after the war ended, eight years after World War I ended, and honored only veterans of that war. Then in 1954, after World War II and the Korean War, it was renamed Veterans Day to honor all veterans who served in America and defended democracy. So today we honor all of our veterans who unselfishly placed their lives on the line for our freedom. Those men and women who ordinary, were ordinary people until they heard their call of duty and answered it. They left their families, their homes, their lives, not for the recognition of, not for the recognition of fame that came with the honor we bestow on them today. They protect our family, our country, and to maintain our way of life. As we honor our veterans and remember their great deeds, let us also salute those who currently are fighting for our freedom. Thank you. So now, my memory is not what it's, <laughs> I thought it was, but now we have the uh, invocation and prayer by Sergeant Major, retired, James O. Holman. First of all, I want to say good morning to all of you out there this morning young and old, and giving honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you General Correa, General Grant, and General Williams, and all of you, my sisters and brothers. It's so good to see so many of us old folks here this morning, and we thank God for another day. And it's good for me to be back in this building I was here for quite a few years with the JROTC program, and I loved every minute of it. And I say to you young people, do your job, and it's worth your time, okay? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father in heaven, hear this again, Father, a few of your humble servants have gathered here this morning, Father, in the name of Jesus. We gather before you, O oh Father, to give you all the praise and all the glory, to say thank you, sir. We thank you, Lord, for you being God all by yourself. We thank you for your darling son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for each of us that are here right now and the life have been spent that way. in. And Father, even though some of us are leaning, we just want to say thank you, sir. We thank you for being able to lean and then give you all the praise. And Father, we pray for these young people here that are trying to follow in our footsteps, oh Lord. Let them not, under, not, let them not faint, oh Lord. Allow them to stand strong and realize they're in the best country that's in the world. And Father, we just want to thank you for this organization. Thank you for this breakfast. And Father, we bless it right now in your holy name as we partake of it for the nourishment of our bodies. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
General Corps served almost 33 years in active duty worldwide, where he commanded as soldiers and civilians, such as myself, at every level. At the Pentagon, he served as a military assistant to the Secretary of the Army and civilian works. At the Corps of Engineers, he became my boss at the headquarters for Washington, D.C., and served as chief of staff. General Crib is a native of Pittsburgh. He and his wife, Rita Paul Crib. They are, they have four adult children, all the graduates of Jackson State University. We won't go to yes. <laughs> And they have six grandkids. I give you General Robert Crib. Good morning. There's a word that means anything but no. Something that's always positive. We call it an army thing. And a lot of people call it the uh, H word, right? That word is spelled H-O-O-A-H explanation point. And it's pronounced Hua. Let me just tell you this. You see a soldier, no matter where that soldier is, walk up to that soldier, look him in the eye, and you say that word, I guarantee you get a smile on that soldier's face. Even retired soldiers. You want to try it? Okay, count of three. One, two, three. Hua! See, it still works, it still works. I want to thank Ms. Pope for that generous introduction. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Hood, Mrs. Hood, thank you for inviting me to speak to your students and to the veterans today. Uh, Principal Tamika Island, thank you for having the time and taking the time to have a ceremony that uh, represents and that supports our veterans. I want to acknowledge some of the folks that are here today. Brigadier General Tony Grant, uh, a fellow engineer officer, pretty close to being a native of Vicksburg. She's uh, from Fort Gibson. She uh, graduated from Fort Gibson High School. It's kind of historic today. You have me as a general, but you have, as I mentioned, Colonel Gant, but we also have General Williams, who's sitting at the table as, as well. She is a graduate of Vicksburg High School. And what we, all three of us have in common is that we're all uh, products of the Army ROTC program. So if you never thought maybe it's possible that you can move up and at the highest levels coming from ROTC, right here today, you see great examples of that. I also want to acknowledge uh, Sergeant Major Bowman here, who I've known for a long time. Most of you know when he was over the program here in, uh, in, in, in uh, Vicksburg High School. But I've known him since we were, you know, church members. I met him at a picnic. And uh, again, that's one of those guys whose lifelong mission to support you all with what you do. I want to certainly acknowledge the other gentlemen, distinguished guests, and then most importantly, our fellow veterans are here today. It is a privilege for me to honor a very special group Americans today. And they are the Americans' veterans. And young people, I'm just glad you're here today to help honor them. I can think of no place as a fellow Mississippian, Vicksburg native, and veteran that I'd rather be today than at this ceremony at my hometown. As you see, I've, I've celebrated Veterans Day in many places all over the world. It's often said of fallen soldiers that they have made the ultimate sacrifice for their country. And indeed, they have. Those of us who are fortunate enough to have served without making that sacrifice can look forward to a long, wonderful age of retirement. And I've talked to some of the retirees today. So I give thanks to God that I am blessed enough to be in that position. In January 2008, my wife, Rita, who's my high school sweetheart, and my bride for 50 years now, mother of our four adult children, 
we made the decision to transition out of the Army and begin our second age. Who could have guessed that I would be able to end my military career at the same place it all began for me, in my hometown of Vicksburg, Mississippi? It's hard to believe someone asked me a few minutes ago, General, you've been retired about five years now? I said, no, it's been 15 years. <laughs> so my, how time flies. We spent 32 wonderful years, eight months, and 22 days on active duty in the United States Army. And the truth is, it has been, above all, a privilege. 16 moves. When I look at the family, the Army gets a family, they get a soldier. Christy, my oldest, born in Vicksburg, finished high school in Missouri. Kimberly, my second, born in Missouri, finished high school in Colorado. Bo, born in Missouri, finished high school in Vicksburg. And my youngest, Reginald, born in Germany, and finished high school in Vicksburg, here at Vicksburg High School, where he was part of the JROTC Battalion. So, for me, that privilege is about serving my country, standing under my flag, it's about a devotion to duty, it's been about reaching my potential, and about becoming the best that I can be in any situation. It has been about leading and working with both soldiers and civilians, and helping them to reach their potential on the battlefield, working disaster response, as well as day-to-day -day opportunities that arise. It has been about learning from soldiers and civilians of all grades and ranks. That is what the Army teaches, and that's what the Army expects. So I look back on my career, as I'm sure many of the veterans that are here today, with total satisfaction. Like many others, I suspect I learned some harsh realities of life on the job, yet I always did my best and believed in my heart and the justice and the truth of what we were trying to do and the people we were trying to help. It has been an incredible adventure and career for me and my family. We love our Army career. We love our Army life. We love serving our country. I want to ask all the veterans with us today to stand up. Can you please stand? Now, if you are a family member of a veteran, I want you to stand also. Stand if you are a family member of a veteran. Because it's not only the service member who answers the call to do. So, ladies and gentlemen, the rest of us, why don't we give these distinguished Americans a round of applause, please. You know, today it's hard to recognize our veterans. Some of them are easy to recognize. You look at me, you look at the ones in uniform, and you see the medals, the ribbons. But most veterans live among us quietly and anonymously. They are Americans' own sons and daughters. So let's consider for a moment the question, you know, who's the veteran? Where do you meet them at? A veteran could be an elderly gentleman sitting on a park bench who stormed the beaches of Normandy. You just never know. A veteran could be that grizzled community volunteer with the Salvation Army who showed extraordinary courage at the 38th parallel in Korea. A veteran could be that nurse taking care of newborns in the hospital nursery who once banished burned and bloody limbs in Vietnam. A veteran is a POW who wants to return home to face a culture he didn't recognize and now finds himself able at last to tell the story to his adult children. A veteran could be a police officer driving her patrol car through the neighborhood who spent three tours in Iraq making sure armored personnel carriers didn't run out of fuel. A veteran could be that high school math teacher who spent two tours flying medevac helicopters in Afghanistan. You meet them every day. A veteran is the anonymous heroes in the tomb of the unknown, whose presence at all international cemeteries must forever preserve the memory of all the anonymous 
heroes whose valor dies unrecognized with them on the battlefield or in the ocean's deepest depth. He is an old guy meeting you at the department store, palsied now and aggravatingly slow, who helped liberate the Nazi death camp, and who wishes all day long that his wife was still alive to hold him when the nightmare is gone. He is, she is, an ordinary and yet an extraordinary human being. A person who offered some of his life's most vital years in the service of his country and who sacrificed his ambitions so others would not have to sacrifice theirs. He, she is a soldier and a savior and a sword against the darkness. He is nothing more than the finest, greatest testimony on behalf of the finest, greatest nation ever known. So remember, each time you see someone who has served our country, just lean over and say, thank you. That's all most people need. And in most cases, it would mean more than any medals they have been awarded or were, were awarded. So on Veterans Day, we honor all people who serve in the armed forces. We recognize the fullest possible definition of the term veteran as any person who has served in the armed forces past and present at home and abroad, in peacetime and in war, and on active duty. In the Army Reserve, in the Army National Guard, we honor them today as we have done for the last 103 years. The tradition of honoring American veterans began after 116,000 members of our fighting forces died in World War I, a conflict then known as the Great War, or a war to end all wars, though sadly, that would not be the case. In 1919, President Woodrow Wilson proclaimed November the 11th as Armistice Day. The armistice began on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. His intention was to honor the valiant forces who fought and died in one of the most costly and bitter wars ever fought. It was his hope and this dream of all Americans then that the world would afterwards be safe for democracy. A bright dream it was, but sadly, an elusive one, as we know from history. The need for a strong fighting force emerged again and again in the decades following the proclamation of the Armistice Day. The name was changed to Veterans Day in 1938 and became a national holiday in 1954. Significantly, the Veterans Day mark, this Veterans Day marks the 103rd anniversary of Armistice Day. For a change, a recent change, this Veterans Day, our nation is not at war. However, we continue to remain strong and vigilant to protect our freedoms in the combat terrorism. Members of our armed forces are stationed around the world, standing in harm's way to protect us at every moment. They have the greatest advantage, though. They have the examples of Americans who came before them. From the very day George Washington took the man, the uniform of the United States has always stood for courage and decency and a shining hope in a world of darkness. And all who have worn that uniform have won the thanks of the American people. Vietnam is the exception. And we as a nation are still paying the consequences. We should resolve to never again allow our veterans to be disgraced. So on this Veterans Day, we must all be there to listen to and hear our veteran stories. Talk to your veterans. Talk to your uncles, your aunts, your fathers, your grandfathers, your mothers, your aunts, your grandmothers. They aren't all easy to listen to, and they are far from easy to tell. They make up the story of America. The America that rose to greatness during the 20th century on the shoulders of ordinary citizens who did not shirk at the highest responsibility of citizenship, who were willing to pay the highest price to preserve peace and freedom. This, was, this is what made 
extraordinary citizens of ordinary Americans. So the last thing I'll leave you with is this poem that I really like to recite on Veterans Day. It kind of gives you the, again, the, the, the feel, the weight of what a veteran is. is. This poem is by Charles Provence, puts things in perspective. Here it goes. It is the soldier, not the reporter, who has given us freedom of the press. It is the soldier, not the poet, who has given us freedom of speech. It is the soldier, not the campus organizer, who has given us the freedom to demonstrate. It is the soldier who salutes the flag, who serves beneath the flag, and whose coffin is draped by the flag, who has given the protest the freedom to burn the flag. To all our veterans and their families, we say, your contribution and acts of selfless service make a profound difference in our world. We praise you, we honor you, we thank you. May God bless our veterans, and God bless America. Hua. Everybody that knows me know I'm a man of few words, so I'm going to get this thing back on track here. I just want to say uh, quickly, though, uh, to all the veterans, uh, our nation owes you a great debt of gratitude that never, never be fully repaid. Your service and sacrifice for protecting the constitution for protecting our Constitution and the American way of life. We thank you. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Dr. Hyman, would you like to have a word or two?
visit and, and I know you have made a very positive impact on them and I greatly appreciate it. Uh, would you like to have a word? Uh, General Williams, would you like to have a word? All right, so that being said, thank you everyone for coming out. Uh, I know we've got some uh, adjustments that we can done, so I'm open to any comments or, or suggestions how we can make this better. So this is the first time that we did this. Uh, but happy Veterans Day and we'll see you downtown. Thank you. 